Okay, um, it's my very great pleasure to introduce to you our next talk. I think industrial um, security has been a lot of has been in the news a lot in the last year, um, and I'm very curious what our next speakers are going to have to say about that, and especially in the context of railways. So please uh, welcome Sergey, Alex, and Gleb with the um, next talk: the Great Train Cyber Robbery. Hello, Congress. It's a great pleasure to see you again. As usual, we only frontmen for SCADA Strange Love team who, uh, for the last five years, uh, trying to save humanity from industrial disaster and to keep a purity of essence. So please keep your big hands for all people who support us. Just not for journalists, this is uh, SCADA Strange Love team talk and mistake by joke all our responsibilities. It's not related to our uh, employers. So, railways. Railways is one of the biggest uh, artificial system built by humanity. It uh, takes uh, thousands and thousands of kilometers all around the globe on different continents. And my personal trip, railroad trip, uh, when I was a student, uh, take more than 9,000 of kilometers and uh, six days. Uh, maybe because I was young and uh, have a lot of time, uh, but still, uh, even now, I prefer to travel by train uh, because on airplanes uh, you uh, see the uh, earth from the skies. When you're in train, you can observe, uh, connect, uh, uh, connect with people with this um, land. But our, in our hacker vision, most important question is how it's work, because it's always interesting to understand uh, how work, in this case, railways. There are two important words in railway, uh, universe is the signals and switches. Signals uh, allow to train uh, operator, to train driver to understand correct speed uh, should he speed up or uh, stop or slow down. And switches obviously allow to change direction and uh, move train from uh, one track to another. Many years ago, uh, Switches and signals operated by human uh, manually. So if you want to move train in different direction, uh, you, can, you must uh, change uh, switch by your hands. But about uh, maybe 100 years ago, uh, years ago modern system, uh, call it interlocking, was invented. Interlocking is a system which uh, uh, calculate dependencies between train location, signals, and uh, switches position to understand can train uh, go in this direction or is prohibited. So if uh, it see conflict routers when uh, ro routes when uh, train can collide, uh, it's prohibited uh, this uh, situation by at first, uh, physically, uh, physical locks, which is why it's interlocking. Uh, it uh, looks like steampunk picture, but still uh, physical interlocking works. Uh, for instance, in uh, New York City transit, uh, you can find uh, what uh, some of stations still operated, but manual interlocking machine. Very important point related to railway is a uh, uh, way to understand the position of the train. Uh, there are uh, a lot of different ways to do it now in modern uh, world uh, in all this, with all this high-speed train. There are GPS tracking, GLONASS tracking, but uh, track circuits still uh, 
very, uh, very widely adopted. What is a track circuit? Uh, uh, in this uh, idea, uh, we use uh, rails uh, as a wires and transfer uh, power into rails. Sometimes it's DC, sometimes it's AC with modulation. Uh, by the way, signal relay uh, accept this signal and uh, if it's okay, it's uh, uh, open uh, to clear light to green. If uh, we have a train on the rails, uh, when uh, it's kind of sh uh, a little uh, short circuit, and relay is uh, de-energized, and uh, train switches to stop signal. So now we're speaking about relays. After physical interlocking, uh, uh, most of uh, railway automation system was built on the relays, uh, on special little relays, which uh, built uh, with a lot of gold, which can operate in wide range of temperatures. And what's most important, vital relays are gravity-operated devices. But nobody knows what is gravity, which is why I think nobody knows how vital re relays are working, and it's working by magic, and that is why we should trust it. Uh, by the way, uh, for me, relay room on railway station is a place when it's now about and uh, get inspiration for a soundtrack. Because you can sit here for hours and listen to this music. Okay, this is old school. Uh, but today things change it, and we have a lot of automation system, computer-based system on the locomotive, on the way station, uh, on the uh, on a station on wayside. It's a uh, traction motor control, computer-based interlocking, uh, computerized ticketing system, etc., etc., etc. Let's discuss in details uh, how it works. I want to give you an example about uh, Eurostar train, uh, which, uh, which name it one of the most smart train in the world, because it has uh, one, two, three, five, seven automated system on the board uh, for France, for Great Britain, for Belgium, uh, and generic European uh, train control system. Uh, uh, but uh, let's stop, uh, stop for a second and check this uh, highlighted reactor protection system on the board of Eurostar train. I hope this is typo because I am not ready to speak about nuclear train at the moment. Hello. Hello. Switch on the mic. Yep. Hello. So the locomotives, uh, they uh, build from several vital systems, like uh, the one that uh, allow them to move, to stop, to uh, say the driver that uh, say the driver about the situation on the roads, and uh, most importantly, the train protection system that can uh, somehow react and prevent several ac uh, some accidents. All these uh, subsystems are interconnected. So, for example, traction system won't mess with uh, braking or uh, in case of uh, some accident, uh, the train protection can uh, stop the train. Uh, the bummer is uh, you can't find uh, anything uh, to conduct security research on the internet, publicly available, and uh, this is uh, true for all railroad software. But if you uh, try hard enough, so let's speak, uh, for example, about uh, one system that's actually a train protection system called uh, CBUS. The 10-year-old uh, version of its uh, CBUS 32 is very, very widespread, and the newer one is uh, CBUS PN is very new and is still a catch, and some of us will catch it more than others. So uh, let's look at, uh, on how this uh, system was updated, and just by looking at it, we can uh, see a lot of things, like. Uh, they stopped using some proprietary operating system, and uh, it's a good news because uh, most of the time home-brewing operating systems tend to be disastrous. 
uh, they, in this system, uh, they don't have uh, hardware controllers. They have uh, PC-based emulation called uh, WinAC RTX. Uh, they have uh, new modern, uh, well, not new and not modern, but uh, unified uh, transport like Profinet. And uh, nowadays they use uh, very widespread uh, CPU architectures like uh, x86 uh, and uh, PowerPC. And it's a uh, way to ease the job done by reverse engineers. So when you read a lot of manuals and documents on the internet and uh, you know uh, from which subsystems some locomotive components are built, you can actually or probably uh, find something on the internet. Uh, we are speaking about uh, WinACRTX Win PC-based uh, controllers. But uh, it's not the time to talk about it. But still, we can talk about uh, the internals of the system, and uh, this is actually what uh, tells us a lot of things, not vulnerabilities, but weaknesses. Like, uh, if you want to control the, the controller, to stop it, to shut down, to run, or anything else, you don't need authentication, and uh, you don't uh, see any kind of uh, industrial uh, protocols. It's just uh, XML over HTTP and it's uh, easy to repeat and uh, easy to build your own tools to control them. And uh, if you look deeper, all these things are self-written, like uh, HTTP server and XML parsers, and uh, I believe you can guess what this means. The next logical step would be uh, to talk about how can we reach those systems in the real world but uh, we don't know and uh, we don't want anybody to know about this. So uh, let's computer, uh, continue our saga and switch to computer-based interlocking. Uh, the goal of computer-based interlocking is to help uh, to manage route through the station and uh, if we uh, try to analyze it from as a computer system, uh, we can find the uh, following important part of computer-based interlocking is a, a yard master workstation. It's like a human machine interface. In uh, ICS environment, it's just a PC with uh, special software on the top. And the second important part, this is integration gateways. Uh, which helps to com com connect sometimes uh, wirelessly to different station or to uh, centralize the traffic control system. Uh, most important part of uh, computer-based interlocking is a central processing unit, which uh, uh, process all dependencies, like uh, uh, we saw in the previous pictures with logs. Now it's processed by computers. And uh, object controllers uh, like PLCs uh, in our SCADA environment, which uh, transfer uh, management command direct directly to wayside devices to uh, switch the switch or to uh, change the light of the call, call uh, sorry, of the light. Uh, requirements for computer-based interlocking uh, is uh, very formal. And in different countries, uh, you can find uh, these requirements as a state law or as a uh, law of different uh, uh, railways companies. Uh, by the way, because it's vital uh, component of, uh, for safety, for traffic safety, uh, this requirement is fixed and all uh, uh, interlocking system must uh, uh, be uh, must fit such requirements, sorry. Uh, so, uh, when we speaking about security, it's very important to build correct threat model. Because you know, when we uh, discuss computer security, people mostly discuss uh, integrity, availability, confidentiality on information, but this is, does not work in industrial world. It does not work for uh, computer-based uh, interlocking. From our point of view, there are three levels of threats. First level related to safety or cyber physical threats uh, allows to attacker to create a disaster. Uh, second level 
its economic, uh, economical threats, which allow to attackers to uh, uh, impact freight efficiency, to, uh, you know, to impact your revenue as a railroad company. And uh, uh, low level is uh, reliability when you can impact system, but this uh, uh, just add additional work for engineers who support this system. Uh, sometimes uh, colleagues asking me what is cyber physical threats. Uh, for me, uh, I don't uh, have a clear definition, but for me the threats which uh, uh, can be uh, done uh, in cyber world, uh, but impact something in real environment, like this. <laughs> All this funny on the pictures in the Twitter, but uh, let me explain uh, by example what is uh, conflict routes or what is uh, less strict, uh, restrictive signal uh, light. This is example of conflict route. This is less restrictive signal light. But this is Lego toys. Let's check it how it works in real life. It's not such funny. in the correct position and even uh, if driver understand the situation in trying to stop it's impossible because train very heavy so let's uh, discuss attack vectors uh, again uh, computer-based interlocking to uh, make appropriate model uh, first uh, level it's uh, attacks again uh, uh, workstation, which can be easily accomplished by security, uh, physical security bypass or by social engineering because uh, it's not uh, very hard to force somebody to plug USB drive into workstation. Uh, second uh, level of attack, it's uh, attacks against integration gateways, is against wireless and uh, wired uh, network devices which connect computer-based interlocking to rest of the world. And other uh, attack vectors also related to communication, to communication uh, between uh, yard master workstation and CPU, communication uh, between CPU and uh, object controllers, and sometimes even uh, related to communication between object controller and wayside devices, because uh, we saw a situation when object controllers communicate with wayside devices over wire, wireless link. So if you can intercept it or make a man the middle attack, you can control uh, switches by yourself. So uh, I will give you several examples. All examples are from Google. It's not related for any particular uh, assessment we did in the past. Uh, first, uh, physical security. Uh, it's actual pictures, I guess, and uh, it looks like actual pictures because during our assessment, uh, physical security is terrible. In most cases, you can say, okay, guys, I uh, need to check your system ABC, XYZ, pass to the station and uh, get access to a workstation or a service. Uh, password protection. Uh, uh, Second uh, picture from uh, movie, documentary movie about uh, Great Britain uh, railway automation system. <laughs> the, 
The main challenge here to guess uh, workstation name, which uh, also a login, you see, CO, way, uh, SX, something, but I think NetBIOS responses can help here. Uh, old software, it's everywhere. Uh, it's again from Google. It's actual uh, new, new equipment and system approval certificate, uh, which uh, allows to use system which runs on the Windows NT4 service pack 6 and above. And this system managed uh, track guards, uh, and this is flexible safety processor. But about safety, uh, most of uh, uh, railway system built with uh, redundancy in mind. Uh, it's used several CPUs, uh, sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes even eight, which runs different. Uh, same, but the different programs, sometimes built by different team of engineers, uh, and uh, some kind of majority system which uh, compare results and trying to understand is there any problem with computation. But in practice, it means if you have a root access to computer-based integral working, you need to patch several locations in memory, not only one. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, as Sergey said, uh, previously in old days we had this uh, steampunk-like interlocking, but and uh, the, most of the complexity of building them was in crafting of uh, building. And nowadays, uh, it's about how to create a, a safe system. So, uh, by saying we want to have a, a safe interlocking. Uh, with uh, women three things, like trains should not collide, should not uh, derail, or trains should not hit people. And uh, they are doing this by use of uh, different formal methods, uh, so to mathematically prove that uh, these uh, safety critical systems are really safe. Uh, I won't tell you about uh, formal methods, this is a topic uh, for a separate talk. But uh, uh, in short, we are talking about uh, creating a set of uh, specifications with uh, requirements and uh, a model uh, of uh, our process. And the point is uh, to prove that uh, our model satisfies these uh, requirements. Uh, we have a lot of, the world have a lot of uh, different uh, instruments like uh, P methods, uh, event B. Uh, prove your comments, so on, and all those systems, all of those systems are used by industrial companies to make uh, safety critical systems. And we will talk about uh, B method uh, that is very widespread, not only for, I don't know, space rockets, airplanes and trains, but also for vending machines and traffic lights. Uh, there is a development environment called uh, Atelier B that allows us uh, to create those uh, specifications and models and later on to prove that uh, we are safe. Uh, this development environment also have a translators from uh, the models that you have created to different uh, languages like C, C++ and other so you can later integrate them in, into your solution. Uh, we are not trying to say here that uh, the math is wrong with uh, Atelier B or uh, the B method itself, but uh, we're trying to show how uh, a human a developer can uh, create uh, wrong uh, specifications, and uh, this can create uh, different, uh, different vulnerabilities like memory management, and this is a part of uh, slides from one of the developer of uh, Atelier B. Uh, where uh, they say that uh, they can cope all with all, all of those problems. Uh, so uh, we took Atelier B and created a very small uh, project. It's uh, called Bad Index. It has an, uh, an array and one operation that tries to uh, access an item in the array. And uh, as you can see, there is uh, no boundary checking in the code and uh, all of the green circles to the left. They say that uh, all type checking uh, was done correctly, that we generated uh, 
proof obligations, we proved everything, so kind of we are safe. So if we generate uh, a program in C afterwards, we can see uh, a situation where a memory corruption or segmentation fault can occur. And again, uh, this is not the fault of uh, the MF, it's a fault that we uh, haven't done the boundary checking. And uh, uh, the point we want to prove is that uh, uh, there are still humans, the people who write these uh, specification requirements. And uh, as with any other programming language, they can introduce uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, actually, good news uh, in the world, none of the people I, I heard that generate these uh, things to uh, C code or C++ code, they use other. Uh, which is uh, with its uh, strong tag checking, checking is uh, a more secure language in comparison to C, for example. But uh, there are some pitfalls too, like uh, uh, typical other implementations have uh, a mechanism called uh, uh, trump lines, and uh, that means uh, it will execute code on stack, which is uh, uh, not very good for C programs. And uh, for example, if you want to link other code with C libraries, uh, one of the security mechanisms won't work. Uh, so let's get uh, back to the railroads, uh, to the interlocking. Uh, these systems are not actually uh, that easy, and most of the times people who create those formal methods, they try to uh, mathematically prove that uh, only the logic part is safe. Like Sergey said, uh, we must not uh, allow uh, trains to to collide or something like this. Uh, all other systems, uh, like the operating system where, uh, where we will place our code, the different communication services, the user interaction part, the part with, with the signaling when we want to know where is the train, what is the position of the switch and so on, it's almost always uh, written in C and uh, this provides us uh, a lot of uh, capabilities to exploit this and somehow to influence, influence this uh, proved for safety logic and uh, to create it to, to work otherwise. So this is a slide where we uh, show the vulnerabilities for this uh, formal methods and other vulnerabilities of this uh, interlocking systems. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, if you're trying to discuss uh, those vulnerabilities with uh, railway people, with engineers, with um, uh, uh, people who support uh, interlocking system, uh, the typical answer, okay, you can uh, create uh, uh, conflict rules, but in the lab, because all in real life is air gapped. Okay, let's talk a bit about air gaps. Fortunately, if you, uh, if you type uh, railway in Shodan, you will get uh, very few results, and most of uh, those results is false positive, I hope. Uh, but uh, sometimes you can get something interesting. For instance, uh, Delhi railway station somewhere in India, uh, which accessible uh, uh, via uh, PPTP port, but I guess this is not something industrial grade, it's just internet access for a uh, station. Uh, what interesting here, interesting that uh, this device is located in the company Railtel Corporation of India. So I guess that uh, there are special telecom operators for railways. For instance, in Germany, um, there is special network operation, uh, operator who support Deutsche Bahn uh, network and they also they provide SIM cards. Uh, interesting why uh, railway operator needs SIM cards to allow uh, train drivers to upload a high, uh, high res resolution video to YouTube or something. No, for GSMR, GSMR is railway version of uh, GSM which use it 
to connect uh, trains to wayside devices, to calculate uh, optimal, spe uh, optimal speed, to understand train location, train location to uh, manage uh, all uh, uh, conflict situation. And GSMR is good from encryption point of view. Uh, it was a very good uh, talk uh, from Stefan on 28C3, and uh, you can find a lot of information about GSMR key change, encryption where, and uh, we decide to don't go this way, to don't uh, crack encryption. We decide to uh, check our side of GSMR. For instance, Gemini. So it, it, it's in specification that if digital modem, uh, the digital modem on the train uh, should always connect, be connected to control center. So if the, may, uh, the modem uh, connection is lost, the train will automatically stop. So if you have a good GSM jammer, but on different uh, frequencies, you can stop a train if you need it, or you can go in jail also <laughs> if you need it. Uh, there are different other interesting issues. Uh, for instance, in GSMR handset, uh, uh, there is a one of uh, there is a very useful feature to manage this hand handset via SMS with uh, password one two three four. Uh, I'm not sure, but there are a lot of engineers who change it with password. Uh, I guess there are not so many engineers who even know that this uh, handset can be managed via SMSs. Uh, to continue SMS uh, discussion, uh, there are very interesting uh, feature uh, GSMR, uh, in JSMR SIM card, uh, which uh, call it over their management and which absolutely the same like is in our standard SIM cards. I know that you know that uh, SIM cards can be hacked over the air. Uh, it was discussed several times by Karsten No, by uh, Alexander Zaitsev and Alexeo Osipov. And um, uh, if uh, developer of SIM, SIM card applet uh, uh, have some issues with uh, uh, programming, uh, he can allow you to uh, get uh, encrypted response to brute force uh, uh, signature key, key and after it uh, receive information about encryption key uh, uh, and sometimes even upload malware on the SIM card. After a Karsten talk, uh, many of big telecom operators uh, decide to review SIM cards or filter bi binary uh, over their uh, SMS messages, but I'm not sure that something similar going in GSMR world. Moreover, uh, some GSMR equipment uh, supports over the air firmware updates, not only SIM cards updates, which uh, allows you to do firmware updates over the air. Uh, modern modems for GSMR uh, supports interfaces like USB or PCMCI, which uh, reminds me our uh, old research, uh, which named it Bootkit via SMS, when was demonstrated like uh, uh, how attacker uh, who can hack the modem over there, for instance, with over the firmware update, uh, can use it to hack the host which use this modem for network communication and gain control over this host. Uh, this is old video, it's online for a year, uh, um, uh, which demonstrate how hacked modem uh, which connected to uh, laptop, uh, first starts to work uh, as a um, modem, network devices, and this is okay. Uh, but after a short uh, timeout,
it starts to operate uh, as a keyboard. And obviously, keyboard can type. <laughs> so as a real hackers, uh, our modem uh, start calculator. And after we get a specification of input-output system to bypass a safe boot, uh, safe bias if you have it, and reboot the computer. During reboot, uh, our modem uh, become a CD-ROM drive. <laughs> and install boot kits. <laughs> uh, you can ask me, are there any keyboards in railway equipment? My answer is sometimes uh, they have it, sometimes it doesn't have, but in most cases, they have drivers for keyboards, drivers for uh, additional um, a system for printers sometimes. And if you can become a printer or a camera, you can exploit vulnerabilities in drivers or uh, direct memory access. Uh, as was demonstrated by Travis Goodspeed and Sergey Bratus for local vulnerabilities, and as was demonstrated by Timur Yunusov and Kirill Nesterov for remote vulnerabilities. Because nobody cares about buffer overflow in keyboard or mice driver. Why? Because it cannot be exploited remotely. But if your remote device can become a mice and exploit this vulnerability, you can exploit such vulnerability remotely. So let's back to railway system. And uh, if somebody can attack the modem, the modem can attack automatic train control system, and you can control the train. Well, well, well. Everything is interconnected because everything is entertainment. Well, let's take a look from uh, let's take a look on the uh, locomotive railway systems and you can find out a lot of devices, a lot of systems. Uh, from one the point of view, it's uh, especially for passengers, users, like information entertainment systems. Another one, it's devices like intercommunication between engineers, uh, cameras, wireless access points, gateways, and so on. But the main idea that all of them operates uh, through the one uh, communication channel. One of them com communicates especially for railways, another one for some kind of impro information systems. Well, and uh, it's another one proofs of, of it because, uh, no, it's uh, from, for example, from big vendor uh, Moha. And uh, it shows uh, their approach how to uh, get connected uh, uh, different devices and uh, how they connected uh, with lo locomotive, especially for solar power plants and AP cameras too. And uh, they tend to fly in the clouds. And uh, nowadays, modern way, they tend to be uh, like an uh, Internet of Things devices. But in this case, and especially in context of our topic, it's uh, realized, it's created without a very strong, very secure approach. Well, and uh, we will show you why it exists. And uh, we analyzed uh, several uh, vendors like Bintech, DG, NetModule, and so on. We analyzed uh, different devices, type of devices, switches, uh, special uh, uh, railway equipment, uh, gateways, uh, uh, modem, modems, and so on. And uh, we found out a big uh, private case zoo. Uh, from our previous experience, it exists, and it exists in different, different uh, industries, but in this case, uh, it little bit shocked us because it's railways, you, I, I, I mean, and there are a lot of private case and each vendors tend to be, tend to hard code the private case. Well, and, uh, well, it's, it was not only for, 
uh, SSL certificates, private keys, uh, which correlated with uh, certificates, but also for remote management, administration, li like uh, Secure Shell. There was exist uh, from one vendor private case for a Secure Shell. Okay, and uh, you can ask us, uh, and you could write uh, so, what's the impact of it? First of all, I can say, oh, hello, Captain Abbas. Uh, if it, it, it's private uh, and uh, it's private, it became publicly available, it's not a private. It's easy, yes, and obvious. And uh, another one, uh, that's uh, if you create something private, especially for private case, it's created for private communication, for private, uh, for safe communications. But in this case, uh, I hope you know, it's uh, like a man in the middle attacks. And uh, after it, uh, communications between railways uh, systems, they are not secure. Also, as I said before, it's give us give attackers possibility to remote login shells, and we will show you a little bit later. And uh, another one, uh, it's fingerprint devices. For example, you can extract public keys uh, from private, uh, create uh, some kind of fingerprint uh, using MD5 and uh, SH1. And uh, using search engines like Shodan or Census, you can find out a lot of devices which is connected to internet. And you know, private case, you know what to do the next. And uh, this picture shows you uh, original, uh, traditional way how to hold a beaver. And in this case, it means how to keep your secrets. Next one is, uh, well, 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 it's again, again, a lot of default credentials, but in case of railways management systems, it's not only for web communications, but also for uh, secure shell, telnet, and uh, they try to change, to, so they try to secure communications and change uh, telnet port, well. Uh, another one example, it was, uh, uh, really important notice to dear customers. Uh, so in this letter you can see that you should use only two possible default credentials for administrator, for the administrator password. Well, well, it's uh, a dear customer was born. Well, uh, take a look on this piece of code. Uh, how do you think, is it secure? Or is it hello from early 20s? Well, uh, it's obviously not secure and it's created nowadays uh, at uh, 2015 and it gives us possibility to inject system code. Well, next was quite interesting possibility. Everybody remember about USB, outer run, malware and so on. Uh, but in case of railway devices, special equipment, there is exist USB port. And uh, if you want to ease to uh, easy life of system engineers who don't want to go with devices, there are a lot of, you can put your USB stick and uh, device uh, out of start, out of run. Uh, for example, system update, software update, firmware update, or system configuration update. Uh, how it works? Uh, it works uh, very easy and, uh, and again it's easy life of system engineers. If you re don't remember your password, you can create password list. Uh, well, in this case you can uh, create password uh, hashes and as big as you can and try to brute force and run your uh, after update. Well, you can ask uh, how it's, uh, well, Railways uh, systems uh, looks like uh, isolated from the internal world, but uh, uh, at this picture you can see approach of attacker who can uh, interconnect to railway station through the management system and uh, once said when you connect to internet, internet connects to you. And uh, from the internal side of railway communication, you can see that there is three steps uh, when you trace road, some host, it's tr inside train. Next one, it's outside, uh, well, it's wayside. And next one, uh, which we mentioned before, it's telecom. Well, locomotive uh, has a lot of, of equipment. 
and uh, some of them works uh, uh, for user interface, some of them works, uh, well, especially for net module, vendor works on through VPN. But in this case, they, uh, all of them works through the, the same public mobile network. Well, and uh, there is a proof by Shodan that uh, net module, uh, especially uh, special devices uh, and uh, VPN gateways uh, connected to the internet. Next one is uh, net module vulnerability, which was fixed in new firmware. It was a simple uh, request which changed administrative password, just simply agreed with Yula rules. Well, kudos goes to our colleague Semyon Rushkov. And uh, from our experience, we should give many thanks to uh, search from different countries. Big thanks. Postscriptum. Last year, uh, we spoke about uh, wind and solar energy. And uh, we get a lot of feedback uh, on our talk uh, and decide to launch uh, SCADA SOS project which uh, focuses on the discovering, hunting of open smart grid devices uh, on the internet. And we get a lot of uh, interesting results uh, in the different part of the world. And we get a lot of feedback from the vendors and thirds. Uh, by the way, uh, this approach, this project, help it to remove uh, more than 60,000 uh, internet connected smart grid devices like power plant from the internet. And uh, several vulnerabilities was reported to vendors, to thirds, uh, several were already fixed. And uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Maxim Rup for who contributed this project very much. Thank you, Max. Uh, we decided to continue open approaches. So we start in a SCADA pass uh, project. And we go in right after the, after the talk, we're going to re release the list of uh, default and hard-coded accounts and different uh, PLCs, SCADA, HMI, to force vendors to don't use hard-coded and default password and wear system. So kudos to Aksana Andreeva who helped us to prepare this uh, the list and please contribute. Uh, after our previous talk, we uh, get the comment about uh, European uh, power system. Uh, if somebody can take uh, uh, three gigawatts of the net uh, for a couple of s seconds, the light will go out uh, for a quite long time. But we know that uh, there are uh, special devices uh, like relay protection built on the uh, digital sub substation which built to prevent such bad situation. And we again decide to research it. Uh, well, we uh, did uh, some kind of research in uh, digital substations protocols and uh, in previous conferences we released uh, special toolkits uh, for uh, digital substation protocols. and. Uh, and this year we created, with help of five guides, a uh, challenge called Digital Substation Takeover. Uh, it uh, was uh, implemented with Siemens, uh, C-Protect, C-CAM, protective relay switches, industrial switches, and so on. And uh, but guys, on this uh, challenge, give us the result. As you can see. Global disaster. Well, uh, and in uh, real digital substations, we have uh, very uh, good, very uh, well-known uh, protection called uh, protection relays to avoid this kind of uh, cable melting. But 
relays also vulnerable, uh, vulnerable and uh, uh, on, during this challenge, uh, guys, find out vulnerability on Siemens Protec. Uh, it's uh, with specially crafted packets. You can create Daniel of servers of relays, and in this case, you can cable melt. But also during the uh, uh, challenge, uh, uh, we find out uh, some kind of confirmation code on Siemens Ciprotec. But uh, uh, Siemens uh, uh, doesn't publish this uh, confirmation code on official documentation, but also uh, uh, Siemens says that it's not vulnerability, not hard code. Uh, well, uh, with this code, we can read system log. Also, we can use this for device memory introspection. Very interesting. Next. And uh, the last question from the previous talk uh, was about direct marketing directive, uh, which force wind and solar plants uh, to be connected to central management point, not only to read, uh, uh, current status, but also to actual shut down or reduce output because it's uh, uh, required by electricity market. It's now uh, works in Germany. Many vendors have uh, special models for direct marketing, uh, marketing uh, to in SCADA to support these features. Uh, but uh, we run out of time and hope to discuss these uh, issues next year on our upcoming talk, SCADA with Antenna. Thank you. Some people call them terrorists. These boys have simply been misguided. Okay, all right. Okay, perfect. Um, so, quick reminder, if you really do need to leave, please do so as quietly as possible, and if you can, stick around for the next couple of minutes until we're completely finished. Um, if you have questions for the three speakers, please go to one of the six microphones in this room, so we can all hear you. We have, uh, we have special prizes for best questions. Oh, as I hear, we also even give out prices for the best um, questions, so additional, you know, motivation to ask a great question. Um, all right, uh, are you lining up at mic four? No. Okay, all right, then we'll start with a question from the internet. All right, thanks. Have you studied anything related to the American positive train control system? Um, we don't know yet. <laughs> okay. okay, I don't know. Um, do you have another one? Okay, all right, then um, mic four, please. You said you looked up uh, trains on Shodan and Census. What protocols did you find them on, and how did the results compare between the two services? Uh, in general, you sometimes you can find uh, generic remote management protocol like HTTP, like SSH, uh, from uh, inside network. Uh, as Gleb showed, uh, Profinet is heavily used, but also there are a lot of uh, proprietary protocols uh, which uh, not so public. Okay, I don't see any further questions right now. So um, please give a warm round of applause for our speakers. Thank you. Thank you.